the ninth day may 2021 we gathered again this morning to discuss and talk about issues everybody's lamenting in the zoo the zoo is falling and falling apart real quick quicker than we thought everybody is trying to talk but sometimes to be honest with you perfectly honest with you i was talking to a friend of mine yesterday i have never seen a group of people like those that occupy that place the zoo they call nigeria they are there without a president people are dying every day the next day they'll say oh the president said this they go to a meeting according to them they lock themselves up then somebody comes out and makes an announcement when was the last time you guys in the zoo get your breath anyway <laughs> like the person i was talking to yesterday was one of his uh one of those uh, fans one of those who, who thought that uh we are wasting our time you. you know struggling to get biafra eventually i think he's succumbing because yesterday he said something he said do you know something let me tell you be, let me be honest with you i think more than 80 90 percent of us now believe that buari is not there i said wow welcome to the club welcome to the club because uh <laughs> we've been saying this since 2017 our leader told us when he died uh, he never lied before you know sometimes uh, my family used to say when i talk my mother said for a lawyer lawyer means for me i grew up believing that a lawyer is a liar so i resented that word being called for me calling me a lawyer was a curse i didn't even know that lawyer is something that somebody could make living out of but now the Kano has never lied every single thing he has told us has come up to be true so why do we have to doubt him I wouldn't tell you I wasn't really lying when I was small. I was not that I was lying, but I was I was uh, I was kind of smart. And they look at you as being a liar because you know I say things that people don't even believe. I could at that age I could be saying certain things, but you know. So when I answer questions, so I, I have the belief that if you are very good at lying, the moment you want to talk, every single thing, even when you say the truth, they still think you are lying. But if you are an honest and straightforward person that keeps telling the truth all the time, I don't think anybody will want to doubt you. I never doubted Namdi Kanu since when I joined. I told you I joined IPOB. Uh, I tried listening before I even joined. For me, it originally was an entertainment. But then, eventually, I started discovering that a lot of truth is coming out of this person that these are things that you see you know sometimes you think about something it's in your subconscious mind it's, it's there it's living there with you you just need an opportunity to get it out and as soon as somebody starts talking about it you relate to it immediately that's that's the way life is that's the way it's made you might not know that this thing is hiding within your subconscious mind the man has never lied to us everything that he has ever said so why would i have to doubt him if anybody have said it before as a challenge, tell me one lies. Because what people classify as what Namdi Kanu say is basically most of the time are things that bloggers have written. <laughs> bloggers, they will just go there, they just write one kind. Some of them are even so bad now that they write the, the, the topic, what they are saying, their title is different entirely from the main body of the thing. But uh, that's one now. When I, but I, when you know, you know, when I, you know that kind of thing. So when our leader told us that Buari was dead, he told us the date, told us the time. That was why they went to kill him. Because they didn't know that anybody will ever know that. How did he know it? I don't know. I don't know. I think he's the only one that can answer it. But he always, he always tells us. I mean, that, that's a very simple message. It's too accurate. It's very, very accurate. He's, I wouldn't even call it predictions because he just says them. It's like something that has already happened. It takes us time to realize that he's telling the truth. So everybody today is crying. Everybody is crying. Dino Malaya is like, uh, he's going crazy. This is driving him nuts. And, uh, you know, from the beginning, this was somebody who had been very, uh, I wouldn't, how would I describe him? As Onye Onye Meme. You know, it's like, uh, uh, we have a special name for people who are older, uh, people like us. We see, we see things that we are very young. We are not, too. we are not. Sometimes I think of my age and I smile to myself because 
it's like uh, there are many things I will used to do that I cannot do anymore. Even climbing my step in my house, I sit down in the house because you know, without remote control. Not because I cannot do it, but you see, the body is limited to what it can do. But when you talk, that wisdom, that brain is still there to carry on. Yesterday, I listened to him very, very closely to what he said about this whole thing that is happening. He is very, being very honest. Very, very honest. I am even surprised that they've not, these uh, killers have not knocked at his door, the DSS. Not killers, not, uh, not, not, not uh, unknown gunmen, because the unknown gunmen themselves are very honest people that have been pushed to the wall and they come out in anger to do what they are doing. They have no choice. It's going to get worse. Believe me sincerely. Trust me, it's never going to get better. It's going to go worse and worse and worse and worse. All these governors, all see all of them now, make them ready to run. Because I don't even know where you're going to run to anyway. Because these guys, they strike unexpectedly. You are all forming security. In there, form one of their own security. In there, form one of their own. They have... Keep on form, form one of security. I quick one of before now. In there, I'm up, 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 I'm up. We have a security they call ESN. That Nam Dekano didn't wake up overnight and created that ESN. He started when he came out of jail. In fact, not even I, think, I don't think it's when he came out of jail. He went to United States and spoke to the World Ebo Congress. They ridiculed him. That thing was like a joke. If I was I watched it live. This woman that was saying, Okay, it's good to be afraid of war. But the truth is that, what do you, do you have a choice? My question is, do you have any choice? You're not taking war to anybody. Yesterday I read an article, one of our, my friend, I don't want to talk, say his name on air. He wrote an article about war. He said, I have seen Biafra, but it is not funny that's nonsense i'm sorry to say that it's my love friend my beloved 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 friend that i respect so much but the article i read it i was like what's wrong with these people all my thought was that war you are you are at war every single day there are viruses trying to destroy you you are fighting these viruses you think that is not war the world is made of war they're talking about war i saw war it's not funny and somebody who's like nine years old eight years old that didn't go to the army, he saw the war. You didn't see the war. There are people watching Nollywood that sit on this, on the, you know, sit outside and watch the movie. It cannot be the same with the actors themselves. The actors are in the action. There are most of us that we are at war. Most of us, we are not dead yet. Most of us fought, fought gallantly. They were commissioned in the war front. And then somebody says, I'm afraid of war. There's war going on. You're afraid of war. <laughs> you don't want it to come to you. It will. It's already there. When your mother cannot go to the go to the farm and come back alive, you think that is not war. You're looking for war. You think war is when you carry the AK-47 and face face me, I face you. No. When there is no light for you to do your job, it's war. When there is no food for you to eat, it is a war. When there is no water to drink, it's war. When the government cannot do what they promise you, it is war. They are calling for war. Don't don't think that war is only when you carry ferret machine guns and you know. People just write, you know, good articles, good writer. That was that's what I take him for. I said, mm, only let's not let's not fool ourselves. It's good to condemn. Somebody even commented on that thing. And was, after he said that, then somebody asked a question. So the next somebody was asking, what what are we supposed to do? Then somebody responded by saying, is it by by going to war? You don't have a solution, my friend. <laughs> you could have said exactly what you can't answer a question with a question if you know an answer if you know a solution to it put it out i have always said in this thing in this our struggle i say to my beloved friends if you don't if you don't understand what we are saying please go in don't be marked by this because people are very very angry be very careful what you write i'm not warning you but i'm only telling you advising you as a friend i will never hurt anybody i know that but the truth is, you are better off just shut up. Don't write things because the Umaka are very angry. The children, I have said this many, many, many years ago. I don't forget it. I told my friend who is involved in politics. We were together in the army. I am not just joking about it. 
when this whole thing started i told him i know the way you think but you see what these children are doing today is diff not it's, it's quite different from what we are doing these children are angry and do not forget that even at the time that Ujuku was fighting, we were angry. <laughs> that was this was our age. Oh, Ujuku went to war. Ujuku, Ujuku never went to war. Ujuku war was forced on him. If you know what was going on at that time, I was young, but I wasn't naive. I wasn't stupid. I was reading. Fortunately for me, I lived in a family where uh, most people there were actually talking talking war, war, war. I know I wouldn't want to call some somebody in my family who was basically staying with me in the same house he was in the university of nigeria he would know himself if i'm talking about he was the student union president at that time they were the people that were really really in the front of this thing so the story was being told i was there i wasn't their age i was listening to them that's the important thing so if you don't know what to say about what is going on please just shut up don't write don't mark yourself don't don't put yourself out there to be criticized you have good intentions i understand but you are looking at it differently you can't blame 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 give us a solution you look at the country you are living in you have no water after 60 years you have no drinking water nothing there are some of you who, some of us who was there who were playing music and you know today i know what my colleagues are here the people that did what i did at the time i know how they are here at least recognized nobody is saying that america is the heaven on earth but i'm i bet you if we have half the facility we have here the administration the everything that we have here in in that place nobody wants to get away from there we go from here you come back oh hey, well, boy the zoo too sweet oh. it does it's not sweet my brother you are fooling yourself you take money from here you go spend it over there you come back again and start afresh is that what you call life is that what you call life? Is that what you call being sweet? No, it is not. People are beginning to wake up, and they will wake up. So, my friends, if anybody wants to say something, if you don't know what to say, just shut up. You are better off not even saying anything, to be honest with you. You are better off not saying anything. Because, they, you see, they, when you say, people read what you write, and they attribute what you write to your mind, to what you... So, when you are silent, nobody at least knows what you are thinking about. The moment you start writing, you have followers, you have people listening to you. It's okay to write, express your opinion. But please give us a solution, not criticizing us. If you criticize us and you don't give us a solution, then you are a part of the problem, honestly speaking. That's the way I look at it. Let us listen to uh, Dino Balai and hear his, uh, his interview. It's very interesting. You know, so listen to him. The economy, everything. Uh, why this uh, concern, heightened concern at this point in time? Yeah, one will say that um, not only my party, Nigerians have been shouting. We are in a very precarious situation in this country. We are actually in a perilous time. We've never seen what we're seeing in this country before now. Every facet of our national life is sick from insecurity to the economy, to breakdown of infrastructure. And this completely has been threatening the very foundation of our beloved country. If you look at what is happening in this country today, at the end of the day, you will just know that it's failure of leadership. And at times, you look at it's failure of leadership at all levels, because once the head is rotten, the entire body is destroyed. The country is not only sick, but equally suffers from what I call a dreadful congenital abnormality. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means the country is suffering from a problem that is irrevocably um, uh, not only contagious, but there's a possibility that there will be no redemption. Is this real or imagined? It's very, very real. As I speak with you, a few days ago, we had 400 Northerners were arrested in Abia at about 3 a.m. in the morning, moving in 35 buses. 
the implication of that is that information gathering in this country is dead. Because how will they move all the way from up north only to be arrested or accosted in the southern part of the country? Is it in Abia or in Ondo State? Abia. There's, there's, an there's another one in Ondo State. Another one happened in Ondo State. So what we are saying is that we are in a very, very precarious situation and all this boils down to failure of leadership. And the body language of Mr. President, the body language of this government also is not encouraging because government, this particular government have the strength but they do not have the will. They do not have the spiritual will, they do not have the moral will, they do not have the political will to be decisive and take action. For example, why Nigerians are disenchanted, why this problem may not see the light of the day is because since March last year, till this minute, our government is being run on Zoom. Federal Executive Council, back to back, over one year, is on Zoom. Is it not in the light of the present realities, the new normal? It is not normal. Why are we holding the Federal Executive Council on Zoom? Three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, 797 billion was approved on Zoom. One hour, one hour 30 Zoom meetings. No, def we are not defending memos. There's no critical analysis of projects, policy formulation and implementation done on Zoom. America, that is the worst hit by COVID, don't hold Zoom executive meetings. And if less than 60 people, because the Federal Executive Council, they are less than 60, or about 60. So if so less people, than 60, actually. Less than 60. Mm. So if less than 60 people are complaining mm. of COVID, mm. when 109 senators are sitting, when 360 members of the House of Representatives are sitting, then you know that it is not a problem of COVID. It is a problem of incompetence. It is a problem of incapacitation. It is a problem of gross... The, the, the area surface of the council chamber of the presidential villa is far less than the National Assembly. And perhaps uh, the government should not be seen to be violating the safety protocols, non-pharmaceutical no, measures. No, 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 no. Nigeria uh, is Nigeria. And I want to tell you, there's a banquet hall. Even with observation of COVID protocol, can take 1,000 people. That's the, the, the banquet hall in the villa. It's there. Mm -hmm. And even the chambers, the council chamber of the villa, can take 60, even with the protocol of um, COVID. Okay. But that's what I'm saying is that the signal to Nigerians is that there is a problem somewhere. And we have a problem because the president is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Buhari need to speak to Nigerians directly, need to commune with Nigerians, need to converse with the media, need to ask questions. Our president is absent. And this have a negative concomitant effect on the war against the security in this country. As I speak to you, it is very pathetic, but our president is not available. This is the first time in the history of mankind that we have presidency says, presidency says, Garbashe will talk, presidency says, Adeshina will talk, presidency says, we want to hear president say, we don't, we don't, we don't, we didn't vote for presidency. Are they, we didn't vote for are, are they not employed to speak for the president? They are to speak for the president when there's a policy information. But in terms of interaction, we voted for President Muhammad Buhari, not Garbashe. We want to hear President said, not Presidency says, all this put together, culminate together, encourage the insecurity that we are passing through. When last did you hear the President, or, or, or have you ever heard the President sit down and say, you the IGP, if you cannot take care of insecurity in so, 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 so in three months, you are, you, are, you are fired. Have you heard the President say, come, the Chief of Army Staff, if you cannot flush Boko Haram in six months, you are fired. Every the country is sick, mm. killing is pervasive. Look at the innocent children. Just, just in a Kattuna. moment ago, I announced the suspension of the managing director of Nigerian Post Authority. That's, That's an nonsense. action from the press. That is that is politics. It has nothing to do with insecurity that is bedeviling us. We want to see his actions in the areas that matters when they play their internal politics. That's their problem between the Minister of Transport, ourselves, and that's their own internal um, their problem. But what I'm saying in excess 
is that we cannot continue to keep quiet. Unfortunately, Nigerians are yet to realize that in an unjust society, silence is a crime. This problem is pervasive because the people who ought to speak are not speaking. I'm totally disappointed in so many people we call men of God in this country. From my understanding of the word of God in the Old Testament, men, prophets are change agents. God sent them to kings to tell the kings, repent or so, 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 so. That was what happened to Jonah on his way to Nineveh. That was why Moses was told to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That was what Joshua did. And the same thing in the Quran. But these days, people are not coming out to speak the truth. They are afraid of Buhari. Buhari is a human being. He's not an angel. He's not dead. a prophet. He's Buhari of Daura. The man don't die, and they are still afraid of him. I don't understand it. I told you sometimes Onyala can talk sense. Look and listen to this man. Listen to Dino Melai. He's just, he's just making sense. The only thing is that in the look at it as he is making 100% sense. I don't know the kind of people who are going to say, oh, now because of Biafra. Listen to him. Listen to what Dino Melai say. This is very, very clear in our face, and Nigerians are there too docile. Now, eh? They think tire me, tire me well, well. I have conquered fear. I'm not afraid of anyone. Because of course, you don't have to be. If you look at it, the tree of freedom, the tree of liberty, will only be watered by the blood of my tires. That's right. I have conquered fear. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of arrest. They can even stay by your gate and arrest me after this program. I'm used to it. But we cannot keep quiet in the face of obvious obscurity. Now, will you say this country is going to the brink? Every facet of our national life, the economy, insecurity, mm. everything, Buhari's cause, F9 parallel. Now, will you categorize uh, Bishop Cook and Father Mbaka in this, uh, and so many, uh, Cardinal Nayek, or many of them speaking of, will you, mm. uh, will you categorize them into... That's why I use the word people? some. Okay, so Almost. Mm. Almost. Even the Islamic clergy, it is a responsibility to speak. We are the CSOs. Where are the CSOs? Where are the civil society organizations? Where are the activists? Where is MBA? Perhaps, where is, perhaps they didn't interpret the reality, the situation, the same way you have. Perhaps they could believe that things we are, are not... all Nigerians. Mm. The people being killed, our brothers, our sisters, our nephews. Now you heard what is happening in Abuja here. How can individuals be the ones citing either Boko Haram or bandits in Kujay and other outskirts of the town? when we have security agencies. Is that not a misnomer? Does it not show that something is wrong? And all this I am still telling you boils down to leadership failure. The, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is grossly incompetent, is not capable, and all I expect is that since this man has shown more than enough evidence that he has no capacity to run this country, President Buhari should, in the interest of um, yet, I mean, children that are yet unborn, in the interest of Nigerians that are dying, please excuse us. It doesn't, it's not something very um, heavy. It's not something very yeah, terrible. Do I have to Hi, Muhammad Buhari, here by resign. But, but simple. Okay, simple, simple. Uh, resignation is an option which he will not likely take. Then the second option <laughs> is impeachment. Uh, uh, just two days ago, the uh, APC caucus in the National Assembly uh, responded to. Uh, the issues raised by your party's caucus saying they stand with this president, uh, nothing will have happen to this president, and this president will not be impeached. Of course, you know they have the numbers. It is expected mm -hmm. they will speak like that because the both chambers of National Assembly, the leadership of the both chambers of National Assembly is a creation of the villa. So, as you speak, now National Assembly is a department, it's an appendage of the villa. Not so, uh, not uh, a separate independent. You just heard that you government. just heard what they said that they will not impeach him, they will not, he's not going anywhere. Despite the array, the magnitude of insecurity in the country today, despite the gross display of incompetence by this government. Where have you, when, when last did you see your president supervising projects, commissioning projects, or visiting here and there? When last did he leave the villa? Yeah, I, 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 I've seen him commission virtual oh, a lot of yeah, yeah. But we are not virtual human beings. Exactly. We are physical human beings. This program is not virtual. Mm -mm. I'm talking to you. So we are not spiritual. We are not celestial. <laughs> we are physical human beings. 
and Boko Haram are physical people. It's not a, a spiritual battle. Unfortunately, unfortunately, morally, medically, spiritually, politically, the president have failed. And there is no other door to drop all this because he swore had the Quran on his left hand, had the Constitution of the Federal Republic on his right hand, and he promised to, to, to defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And chapter 2 of that Constitution is the most potent part of that Constitution that mm. says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary occupation of government. You, you raised some issues about our foreign debt, that our national debt, I moved from about 10 trillion when PDP was in power to uh, almost 33 trillion. And uh, your party is concerned that uh, if we don't put an end, if a, part of your demand is that we should stop forthwith mm -hmm. for that borrowing. APC is what Yoruba people call Omoni Nokuno. Omoni Nokuno is a prodigal child. With the level of debt they are accumulating, we are in a catastrophic situation in this country. And they have not stopped borrowing. But the worst is that if you are borrowing for development, if you are borrowing for infrastructural growth, we can understand. But they are borrowing for consumption. <laughs> they are borrowing for recurrent. Only an irresponsible father will take a loan to buy champagne. And that is what we are doing in this country. We are in a very, so buy very, very, very uh, I've, not seen, I've not seen any of that. I, I'm speaking as a figure of speech. Okay, I'm saying, I'm saying that we are using, we are borrowing for consumption. Okay, okay. Show me all these borrowings all over the all over the years. What tangible thing have come out of it? And the ones we are doing with China, a project that will cost ten million naira. You go and say China is bringing. China will look at it, assess it, and say it's 100 million. That's what is happening. Nigeria will sign, say you, Nigeria, bring 10 million as counterpart uh, your, uh, your, your, your funding. And that 10 million Nigeria is bringing is what is enough to do the job. Mm, now, then this you will now, will now this hold them. a huge allegation. It's not a huge allegation, and I, 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 I can buttress it, I can prove it. Because the same China is operating in some other African countries, carrying out. Carrying out, carrying out different projects, including rail transport business. And we can do a comparative analysis of what those countries are paying and what Nigeria but is paying. But different environment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Rail is rail. Those people even have a more complicated um, uh, texture of soil than even Nigeria. So the whole thing is fraud. Instead of having democracy in this country as government of the people, by the people, and for the people, in this APC government, what we have is greedocracy. Government of the greedy, by the greedy, and for the greedy. For example, look at my states. Kidnapping every day. I was on TV the other day. I saw my, my governor told a compound lie that the kidnap of, of one of the local government chairmen did not happen in Kogi states. Something that happened in Kogi states. My own colleague, Senator Clifford Odia, was coming all the way from Edo within a space of one hour in Kogi State. He got attacked twice, even with his mobile policemen around him. Three of them were hospitalized. He got attacked between Okene and Lokoja. He got attacked again between Lokoja and Abaji on the same trip. That's to tell you the magnitude of insecurity we have in this country today. And people are afraid. I don't know why. Well, people why? cannot speak. I don't know why. No, no, now, no. if you're concerned with borrowings and you want it to end, what about uh, where Zami's uh, uh, principle the central bank is using? You cannot to, give. That's the printing of currency. Let is me tell you, a concern the to problem you why we will continue to borrow, this government rather will continue to borrow, is that you cannot give what you don't have. In the whole of Buhari's government, from Security and Exchange Commission to CBN to Ministry of Finance to uh, uh, what's it called, budget and planning, all the financial sector of his government, there's no single economist. Mm, full and I challenge you. Yeah, full and There is no single economist heading any of them. Mm -hmm. The uh, head of budget office i'm saying that there is no single uh, this is this i'm talking on a live tv mm. and i i i am open to we react can find out i'm uh, telling you that there is no single economist once you give carpentry job to a tailor he will not perform i mentioned uh, uh, akabweze the head of budget office i'm That's talking like, of like management of 
the economic structures of the country. The budget office the, is critical to it. That is not answerable to a minister. It's answerable to a minister. I'm certain of the man who's bo 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 boxed up on the table. Who we'll, we'll verified that? Verify uh, that. We'll verify verify the, it. the status or the and academic that is, background that, of the minister of finance. Go and go and confirm. Confirm. There's no economist among them. Okay. And automatically, you cannot expect miracles to happen when you are always you are operating a government of Zoom. Okay. By Zoom and for Zoom. <laughs> Let, let's take a break. Uh, when we come. <laughs> Uh, Zainab Ahmed, she read accountancy. Uh, is there a, a link between them? Can't no, accountant no, 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 function no, no, as economists? No. no, at all. Accounting is uh, <laughs> numbers, just credit and uh, debit. That's right. <laughs> economists deals with development of mankind, and it deals with macro and micro mm. of the economics. So it talks, it talks, it, it deals with development of a pattern okay. and policy formulation and implementation for a, for, 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 for an economy. Okay. What we need in this country. Oh, we, are, we are trying to get the profile of uh, the head of budget office, which is also critical to. You may have to wait economy. till after. You may have mm -hmm. to search, uh, search till after rapture. When I said there is no single economist in this government, mm -hmm. I meant what I said. But, but even the even the National Economic Council is being mm -hmm. chaired by a lawyer. <laughs> the vice president. So you cannot be talking about what I'm saying is that we, from the foundation of this government, there's insincerity of purpose of art and commitment. Like I said, you cannot give what you don't have. Mm. This, there is no agenda to rescue this country. This government have came and it has been reduction, deploration, reduction, 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 and it's all, uh, it's all intertwined. This economic situation, this unemployment, have a negative resultant and concomitant effect on insecurity. Unfortunately, we expected that the president, who was a general in the Nigerian army, will have the capacity to tame this government. But the behavior has been like a, like a boy scout. I mean, the same Nigerian army that went to Sierra Leone, that went to Mali, that went to Liberia, you know, the same Nigerian army that, unite, that did well with the United Nations are the same people behaving today like Boy Scout. It all boils down to the body language of the CNC, who is supposed to show some level of capacity. We need a president that knows what time it is in the world today. We need a president that knows what, 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 what's up. We need a president that understands global politics and global economy. We need a president who will sit down and put square pegs in square holes. But in this country, with the way things are being run, Automatically, we cannot. You, I, I, mean, I mean, the president should just excuse Nigerians. We yes. cannot continue like this, mm -hmm. and we have to say it the way it is. Not minding all this guard. Nigerians must come out through civil means and react to this level of insecurity. Look at children being killed, kidnapping everywhere, mm -hmm. insecurity everywhere, and there is no. If there is just, hope, just uh, over last few days, the president held. Uh, continuous for several days uh, <laughs> meetings with the uh, National Security Council. It Does it not been, suggest it has been like that? Over president, it has been like that. Committed towards uh, having a firm grip. It has been like that over five years. And once they finish the meeting, somebody come and address the media in front of the villa <laughs> president. Uh, that that is for me is a. It has become a pattern. It has become a routine. What is the effect of those meetings? We are not seeing it. It took fire and brimstone. The president reinforced failure when the service chiefs failed in this country. When a coach filled a particular players for 20 matches and there's no goal, and you continue to fill the same player, then automatically you are sick. You are not okay. Then you are reinforcing, reinforcing failure in the words of Elisha uh, Gwabas and We must move from, 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 from this dead application of power by the APC. But I'm not surprised because it's not a political party. It's not a political party. You were part of behaving. You, you, were, behaving. you were with them for a long time. Uh. Yeah, not for a long time. Once I was blind, now I can see. All things have passed away. I cannot continue to be in, a, in an NGO. Because as I speak to you, APC have no elected national executive officers. So they are not a political party. APC cannot hold convention. They postponed their convention twice. They've extended the life of the caretaker committee. Caretaker committee is alien to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and even the constitution of APC itself. But the PDP in also six had years, a caretaker committee at years, some point. In six years, mm. APC, they do not have a board of trustee. They've not had one board of trustee meeting in six years. 
And these are the uh, I thought they reconstituted and named it Board of Elders and they have were they met, to have they met? But for the PDP, the PDP also held for years interim caretaker committee. Uh, Every part yeah, this is the area where I'm not really interested in when they start talking politics. We're talking about realities of it. The reality is that uh, Buhamad Buhari is dead. They don't, Nigeria does not have a president. And if they think that this killing is going to stop, it's impossible. It's not going to stop. Because the people there, they know. The people that know that the man is... They know. I'm even surprised they are retiring some people and they are not talking. <laughs> anyway, when you have taken enough Ibu uh, and Gungwa, just when they remove you, just go there and start taking care of Mama Kichi and, and Omas. <laughs> that's what it is. And that's exactly what is going on. These people, it is not going to work. I'm so sad. It's sad because Muhammad Buhari has a family. He has ch children. Yusuf Muhammad. <clears throat> These are people running around and they are drawing your father's memory to the grave. Because, you know, all these things that he's doing on death, he's, the man is dead. All these things that are happening, they are calling his name, left, right, and center. Giving him the, 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 that, that name because that's going to go into history. That Muhammad Buhari was this bad, and but the man had died. He was he's not such a great man, but on we go, he died, and they should let him rest. Nigeria should wake up to their responsibilities and come out and speak the truth. They know Ulu Abbasanjo and the rest of them. These people, I don't know what people like Obasanjo. I don't really know what they want. I asked myself, this is the man is old. He's almost going to the grave because everybody that the people that get older is even better. He will know how many of his colleagues that have died. He is still there. I'm not saying that he's going to die before everybody else, but the truth is, the time is now for him to come out and tell the world the truth. You don't carry this thing to your that go. What is the meaning of what you are doing? It's not just him alone. There are many, many of them. Many that started, they started making the likes of all Jews or Carlo. I've always heard he, he's been a rich person from the when he was born. I don't know. I have nothing to do with him. But I'm only saying that if they can be lying and lying and lying and every day they keep lying. Because once uh, a philosopher once said that for you to be a good person, you have to treat every single day as if it's your last day on earth. That That means something. If you can tell me stop hiding these things carrying this load in your head because you might go to bed today and don't come out tomorrow and you know what you'll be going straight to hell because uh, if there is something like that i think i don't know about hell and heaven but i know that there is a dispercussion for everything nothing you cannot just do things and get away with it if they think that nigeria is going to change and become glorious tomorrow why are we fooling ourselves the article that my friend wrote that uh, I think I could have even brought that article to read. I read it. I, was, I wasn't I was very angry with him, but I was angry the fact that if you don't have enough facts about things, please don't write them. Don't write them because you think you're such a great writer and people are reading what you're writing. No. When you make sense, we know when you don't make sense. I, You know, like I said before, I, I've stopped making comments on, on Facebook. I stopped it not because... If I see anything good, maybe somebody says something, I'm like, okay, that this person is making sense. But when people say, I have seen Biafra, and it is not funny, what's that? What kind of language is that? The Biafra you saw was the same Biafra that people like me saw. People like me fought on it. People like me got injured in that war. But I'm still struggling to do what I'm doing. I'm not doing it for me or for you because we're about, uh, we're in the same cycle age-wise i might be older yes but the truth is the point i'm trying to make is when you make it when you when you when you cry you want to you know scare people it's scaremongering that's what i call it if you have a solution to our impending problem please give us the solution because it's easy to to blame a portion fear Oh, I was there. I saw it. it was not funny. I had Kwashioko and the rest of Yes, that is the truth. There's no doubt about it. But are you not still having Kwashioko today? Some of us have grown. We have, you know, we have better place. We, you know, we have uh, areas where we are excel. But look back and t go back to the suburbs and see the children that were your age at the time that this former Biafra came in. They are in the same situation that you were at that time. 
So why why do you think it should be like that? Ujuku was not forced into war. I mean, Ujuku was forced into war. Nobody, Ujuku didn't wake up and wanted, Ujuku had a good life. I'm telling you the truth. His father, Amamu, when I was small, uh, Papaya, somebody would go to look at his home uh, where he lives and what they were, beautiful house. And for the house, the standard at that time, we knew him as a, one of the richest people, if not the richest in Nigeria at the time. Nigerian government took 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 took, a, took his car in his says Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce in those days was called He was like they call him Sa Sa Louis or the Ujuku Sa. His son went to he took him. So what has Emeka Ujuku not seen? Was he really looking for fame? Was he really looking for money? What was he looking for? He wasn't part of the coup. We we all know that. But fortunately, the coup took him there and they they made him the governor. And you think what else what really does he do you think he wanted that will make you think that he went to war because he wanted something he was forced to it he was forced to it i was like i said i was i was i wasn't very old at the time but at least i knew what was going on i saw the way people came back from the north i used my father as an example my parents my mo my father is just my father was living in yola and we all my mother refused to go to yola actually a civil servant he was transferred my mother said hey, i'm not going anywhere i'm staying here with my children you go there fortunately for him he came back alive with the bedroom slippers that he took from a dead person one green and the other one red a civil servant that went that went out came back empty-handed with nothing no he's not even a plastic bag the same thing is going on today it has not changed so when somebody goes out there and say we are breeding war, what war? Where are you to talk about war? Do you go to the north to fight the Fulani? No. You are in your home and then your bush is killing your mothers and your sisters, raping your sisters. Come on, guys. What do you call war? When people say things like this, it's very annoying. Like I said before, if you don't know what to write, please don't. Silence is, is better. You can say maybe you are sick now. <laughs> There's somebody in my community. Uh, when they are talking, he says he's not saying anything. They ask him, he says, That is the right ear. Nigeria, uh, he doesn't hear anything. But at the moment you start talking about Nibu, Nifia, Anu, and Ayeke, Kweke, then he will say, oh, That's what he hears. So if you are out there and you're such a coward, don't, don't, you, maybe you're getting something from the government. We know you want to keep, I have a friend, like I said before, I have them all over the place. I have a personal friend, a very close brother, someone I call brother. He's like me and him. We are the same. He's working in Obiano's government. He's an advisor to Obiano. He's very close to government. He stopped calling me, stopped talking to me because I'm, I'm, I'm agitating for freedom. But he has the right to do it. He's still my friend. It doesn't matter to me. That's the way he chose. That's, that's the line that he chose. He is doing it. He's making his money, taking care of his family. But I know that deep down in his consciousness, deep down inside of him he knows there is something not right so he cannot come in and condemn what we are doing don't come and condemn what just stay away from it don't say anything mature no just go and take care of if the government is giving you contract here and there you're succeeding fine god bless you it's not a problem but let us not think that we are going to keep quiet because we're afraid of war i don't know who stops drink, drinking panadol because you had headache last year, you drank Panadol, and then the the headache came back in the the year after. You said, "No, I'm not going to drink this Panadol because uh, I drank it yesterday." You went to war. The reason why they went to war, they, they eventually the problem is still there, even worse, even worse. And you, you're discouraging people. Oh, I've seen Biafra is not funny. No, that's that's not. I don't find that funny. You don't write things like that. Because what I'm saying is that for me, Ike Peters, I am here. I cannot stop doing what I'm doing. I'll keep doing it. I did it before and I'm still doing it today. And I'll do it forever as long as I breathe. Biafra is the thing that I think that will save us. Biafra is the division that will... That will I know it's not going to be sweet in the first couple of years. But do you know something? By the time... Quote me, by the time we've spent 20, 30 years and these children have spent 30 years in their lifetime because most of us won't be there, at least things will start taking shape. 
it's amazing when you come to this country you see the way children are born when they when they go to school at very early age you're taking them out to school in the morning they know that they have to stand on the line they have to be orderly that is what we don't have there and all those things those things are the beginning of wisdom that's the beginning of sanity orderliness you know you have to be responsible for anything you do you start teaching it to them that's why i'm saying that those of us who are older that came out of the thing called nigeria we're all crystallized we're all like block of ice and for you to do to, to, to make us to reshape us to reshape our minds you have to discrystallize us you know bring us back to water so we can they can create us the way we're going to be that's what biafra is all about we are saying leave us the chance to create these children to create a nation where people are actually free where our children will come up and have a say have something and people will be account they will be because they will be running their government i would i and we and most of us will not be there at the time when they start having that discipline from the beginning and people are saying oh nigeria can be how can you fix it you cannot you can you cannot bend a, a, a dry tree now it's going to crack nigeria is like rigid you cannot change it you can't reshape it the only way you can reshape it is that you demolish it completely excavate it from the floor and build a new nation where people will be like human beings over there you're wasting your time from year to year it's the same story a dream killer take any business there nigeria will swung down it i'm telling you honestly and those who are doing business successfully in nigeria let them come and tell me the honest truth that they are doing this business because they are more smarter than, no because they are they are cutting corners here and there is it supposed to be that way is it supposed to be that way you're cutting corners you're you're doing illegal things here and there how many of you pay taxes to government how many the roads are not built you don't pay taxes you don't have water you don't because you know even when you pay it you can cut corners i am telling you i have seen it i've never seen anything like that i went back to the zoo to biafra land in Aba. i set up a recording studio the people will come to my office the local government you give them money they walk away they put the money in their pocket and i'm shaking i said this is this is unbelievable those of us who left i left i left i left i left, I left the zoo to this country long time ago you know I was a musician came up came here and i saw the way things work out and i knew we were in big trouble we were in trouble in that country serious trouble because you never do anything unless you know somebody you have to know somebody who will help you out oh yes i remember one time i went to visit a friend the police college and then you know the police they are the police in the abuja i had my briefcase i walked in and you know what the guy told me <laughs> it's a big shot in the police he said please when you are coming here don't carry don't carry your briefcase just put it in the car because when they see you carrying briefcase they think you are coming here to to bribe people is that what you call a country the briefcase with documents in it i didn't nobody puts money in briefcase <laughs> but the man said when you carry the briefcase there are many of them stretching their neck and when you come into my office it's like you're coming there to to give me some something because the country is rotten we don't need society like that that is why we want a ref we want a change a change that will give everybody life we are doing what we are doing i tell them most of us here in the united states for instance if we want to forget about the zoo and stay here and grow here and die here we don't have a problem believe me we don't we don't but you over there all we are doing is to make sure that the generations yet unborn take example take very good example look at the families of the people that we're saying they were very rich we were revering them at the time we were small and now they are all gone look at their families are they really because nigeria is a dream killer nigerian so well it is like blue blue you know balloon when you blow the balloon the balloon is so fat just a little pin just touch it boom you are poor you look for the balloon you won't see the, the wealth is gone that's what that's what the zoo is all about i don't blame anybody the blame that i put in is that we were we were given a name by a prostitute and there's no way we're going to after all name on your church a mayor baptist they will give me a new name we are we are created by by somebody who came from somewhere and created us 
Now we are saying, let us go back to what we were before you came. And somebody said, eh, it's going to be the same thing. What makes you think it's going to be the same thing? What makes you think that if we have a local government who is from our area and it says a chairman there that is building one year, one block, all of a sudden he starts building a house in six houses because he's, been, he's a chairman for three months. You think we're going to keep quiet? Of course we're not. Obviously, he's going to answer some questions. But when you are in a society where all he needs to do is bribe those at the center, go there if they're supposed to give him 50 million they give him like a, like a 20 million then he will sign for 50. where the other one nata then he will come in and you think he's going to use that one to 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 to, to build a society for you come on Mban. somebody will say no oh, turn on it's our turn don't even know if i go there uh, don't talk about it because it's our turn those who are hard working that are trying that start from the scratch mm. if there is nothing else they can do they will be able to this to, to to stifle your business to make sure that you don't you don't raise your head nobody is saying that you should go and give especially our people nobody is going to say go and give him money uh, so that government can give him loan no even when you go to take the loan in the bank you are in problem serious problem because there is no light for you to do the business there is there are no roots for you to to for business to survive there's no drinking water there's nothing the little things that the government is supposed to do to make you be able to raise the money to run your business is not there. They carry the whole business, they give it to one person in the north and put use him in laundering money. He sells from toothpick to hairbrush to nail cutter to mascara to every that is everything is him. If you try to do it, they will suppress you. They make sure that they stifle you. Great to see Beto. He, he, he's supposed to be a, 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 a cement merchant, isn't it? So what is going on with him? Tell me exactly how people like that can, their business can strive. When you are in an environment where you are not enabled, the government is not enabling you. You have to wash somebody's hand. You have to go out there and kiss somebody's ass to do what is legitimate, to run your business. These are all the ills. These are the ills in the society that we are sick and we the old people are sick and tired of it. And we don't want to leave this legacy for our children. We want to make sure that by the time we are gone, they will not point at us and say, it was your fault, like we're talking about our fathers. But I'm saying our fathers too, they did their best. They did their best, honestly speaking. Because I don't think that most of us most of us just didn't uh, 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 start seeing this. We started, maybe maybe when we're younger, you will not be able to notice these things because uh, somebody was caring for you. But when you start caring for other people, that's when you will know. Nigeria is such a complicated place that the only solution, whatever anybody might like to say, that is your problem. Most of you just say these things because you want to be, you want to be relevant. You want people to listen to you because you think you can talk. I don't like politics. I don't know what they call politics. What you call politics, you say, I don't like politics is when you talk about what people are saying. Because other people are saying we don't like politics. You want to jump into it. You have no idea of what politics is. Absolutely no idea. Believe me sincerely. Either because of jealousy or because... I don't know. I don't know what... I wouldn't even say it's jealousy. Because originally I used to think they are jealous. But now I'm beginning to see that they are foolish. When they are killing you and you are dying every day in your thousands, it's not jealousy anymore. Honestly, it's foolishness. You're just, you're just dumb. I don't, dumb is a better word. Believe me, I don't know. A country being run by a video president by proxy, nobody is your president for how long now? Somebody yesterday told me categorically when I said, but he said, I know Buari is dead. I never believed it, but I believe it now. But then, what difference has it made to us? I said, you see? So we don't care. Because Nigerians are just, just the way they are. If you don't give them light, they buy a generator. If there is no water, they dig a borehole. So they don't really care. But the point is that it's not everybody. For them, I think it's a thing of pride. And that's, they have a generator they call... I better pass my neighbor. In other words, if you have that tiny little generator that makes noise and keeps you awake at night, nobody sleeps. For you, the pride is that your neighbor doesn't have it. So I better pass my neighbor. 
let us be real biafra 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 is our thing anybody who thinks there's an otherwise thing that he knows how to do forget about it when they start crying war 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 you are already at war it's simple and straightforward when you can't have three square meals a day it is war when you don't have water to drink it is war when you cannot go to the hospital and get a medical attention it is war when a pregnant woman can be let doctors will watch a pregnant woman die because she doesn't have money to pay for caesarean operation it is war so let us anybody who is talking about war trying to bring war to us is very foolish he is absolutely foolish he's just talking because he wants to talk he just wants to talk because other people are talking he has simply no idea what he's doing your body is at war every day the viruses that are trying to kill you they are in there fighting you and your body is fighting back is that not war is that not war you think that war is only when you come physically the fulanis are in your bushes trying to kill people our children in biafra land our 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 so-called governors they are just there fooling themselves yesterday somebody was saying eh, you know your name the car is too proud why don't you go to them you are foolish you're foolish you're talking nonsense why would he go to them has he not gone to them when we want to speak we should think this is a man who started he went to world Ibo congress he spoke about the same thing give me arms the thing is there they, it's all over youtube and they called him foolish they called him they look at him he went to jail he came back he formed the bss the same security people made caricature of it uh, he wants people to be bound that bound down for him okay he kept quiet all the states are creating a mot motorcycle came out other people are creating their own security even the north they see his his bab or whatever they call them they have their own dandoka police <laughs> because i used to hear that word from my dad in those days dandoka police that the own security now he formed east security network eastern security network esn and what did you do oh he has no right to form it oh he he didn't take permission oh he should form it as, as oh no you people are damn foolish i am telling you the truth now during his broadcast we learned because we didn't know that he even wrote a letter to you governors you didn't respond and the man has come out to save his people he has the love of his people the only leader I knew when you will land is Mazen Namdekan. No matter what you say. He wrote this letter and they ignored it. Now ESN came up. Everybody is panicking. As soon as they went to Were, to the police to release 1,800 people, that wasn't even done by ESN. Because IPOB said, we didn't do it. All of them are panicking. They are launching uh, Ibubago and Ibubatoro and Ibubengwere and all the rest of them. What is wrong with you guys? Just take this course away because it's a curse. This is a curse, I'm telling you honestly. Stupid pride that has no meaning. And somebody who feel you think that they know. When that's I don't go into these arguments with people because sometimes it drives me nuts. I don't I want to keep people that I call my friends and hold them in the, the level that I think they are. But when some of them, when you start talking to some of them, you discover that you always are an idiot as a friend. Somebody who has no brain at all. Because the moment you start being jealous, when you have agenda in your mind, you never see the truth again in whatever anybody is doing. A man came out, was looking for this same thing that he has done. Finally created an ESN. That, that's when you people start rising up you run up you line up vehicles overnight okay if you had these things before why didn't you launch them you're waiting for him to come up then you waste that money because it's a waste who are you going to protect go and get them together or you go to you are wasting your energy you're wasting your time 
what is wrong with you see nah, because i think we are wrong we were wrong you are right how do you want us to handle this situation can if i may fire because our children our families are dying no all you want to do is a show of force show of ego uh, i can launch it he doesn't have money to sustain them you know you are playing with the lives of your own people you are playing with the lives of your people these governors whoever they are i'm not talking about honest and but because those ones are just nonsense because i know that when i went to school they used to have something they call people's club i know some of my classmates who were in school with a scholarship from people's club scholarship they were going to school they were in high school Oh, and and D, but since I started hearing them, where is their office? Where where do they really? <laughs> you are not they, when you ask them what is the essence, they say hey, when you die, they will give your wife money. That, I have insurance. Insurance today. Why do I need to join a and D, but Because I, when I die, I will be buried. Uh, my brother, forget about it. If you don't want to bury you have no, you are useless and hopeless when things will happen and you cannot open your mouth and say anything and condemn it politically because you are afraid you cannot be afraid and join organizations like that the same thing i talk to journalists about the journalists they, they are so afraid of what will happen to them that when they see the truth they are not way around because even if you listen to dino, dino Malaya's uh, broadcast the the the, 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 the journalist there was was trying to be very cautious actually because uh anyway i'm not saying that uh he should come out openly and attack. No, he, he should not. But what he, what he is doing is the right thing that he's doing. At least he wants to exonerate himself from what uh, Dino Malai is saying. It's okay to do that. But the point I'm trying to make is that you have to understand that Biafra is our only way out. Biafra is our only way out. Oduduwa is the way out. Arewa is the way out. Everybody should go in separate ways. Then we can come back together and decide to create something that's okay, that's left for us. And for our Olusegun Obasanjo who said, if I may quote him, that if Nigeria breaks up, the, the minorities are going to suffer. And I asked the question, who are minorities? Minorities where? Is it the Igbo man that is a minority in his own home? The Asia man has his own nation. Is he a minority among the Asia people or among the entire Eastern region? I don't know what you, I don't know what minority means. The only thing we have to say to that is this: If you if Biafra breaks away, the minorities will make a choice. Whoever you call minority, because I don't know anything called minority. But to, when let us assume that there, there are people you call minority, they will decide on where they want to go. It's very simple. It's as simple as that. You can't just go there and say minorities will suffer. It's vague language. They, are, they will not suffer. I have an article here I want to read. Somebody wrote something um, that's very interesting. Say, kindly inform our people. Okay, this um, Fulani Hesman Carnage in Anambra State. It's a carnage going on by Fulani Hesman in Anambra State. The governor of Anambra State, for instance, we are not even hearing him anymore. He's like he went he went underground and he's not speaking. He's not saying anything anymore. Let me read this article before I go to open up the line for our normal conversation. He says here the Fulanis are planning to attack Anambra State. They have recalled their people and their cows home. The mighty Allah is threatening hell and brimstone on Anambra because a Fulani family was killed by some aggrieved people. People have expressed disgust at the people who killed even women and children. Let me open the Anambra Kanga Worm to the whole world. Anambra has been in the clutches of the Fulani Hesmen for years now. They kidnap, maim and kill without anybody asking these devil's questions. It is so bad that the governor, Willio Biano, cannot be anything, cannot do anything, I'm sorry. He is afraid of these people. Soris had it that he was nearly physically beaten by the Fulani youth leader right inside Agu Oka. The governor is threatened out of his pants 
some of the Anambra traditional rulers uh, did not help matters. Their greed made them sell their people for peanuts to the killer headsmen. They collect levies from them for inhabitation or habitating in the forests. The Fulani headsmen, equipped with sophisticated weapons, have been into kidnapping and ransom of Anambra indigents since Obiano tenor, but the governor kept suppressing the news of their evil activities until they added rape and killings to their evil agenda. Then they started selling human organs. The Fulani headsmen kill and harvest the organs of Anambra indigents after collecting ransom. The government and the people are aware of these hideous crimes, but their hands are tied. Why? The federal government threatened the governor with EFCC should he react to the Fulani activities and the gov governor threatened the traditional rulers with dethronement if they react. If you doubt the authenticity of this write-up, investigate the cases I will list below. Pre the President General of Oma was kidnapped and killed by Fulani headsmen for daring to protect his people. His corpse was dissected and organs taken. On the course of looking for kidnap PG, more than 300 skeletons were found in the forest surrounding Oma, Omasi, Achala, Amanduke, and Ivite, Uguari. This interesting story. This is funny. It's not funny at all. These are able bodied Anambra indigents killed horribly in their own soil. Once more, please investigate this. The most gruesome is the suffering of Anambra women who were kidnapped. Miss Nkiru, a bank worker, was kidnapped along Aguleri, Ibariam Road, by headsmen. She was raped severely by these dirty devils. She is still undergoing series of surgery to mend her private parts. This is after paying ransom to these Fulani devils. Three women from my community, Ihite Owari, committed suicide after their release because they were rotting away. The wife of a notable man in Amanuke was brutally murdered at Amanuke Junction by Fulani killer headsmen. Countless farmers, both men and women, have been kidnapped in their farms and raped for weeks. These accursed people sodomize and rape men at will. Anambra indigents have been continually abducted and murdered in this manner, and the governor kept stiffing the news of the activities of these demons from hell. His attitude made these horrible devils to gain so much ground in the state. People don't go to farms anymore. The roads are not safe. The homes are not safe either. The incident at Aokozo that has drawn so much outrage was a fallout from the kidnapping and murder of two women two weeks ago. Some youths summoned up courage and approached the Sariki Fulani. Among them was a young man very fluent in Fufude. He had hoped to dialogue with the Fulani chieftain who everybody erroneously believed was the good Fulani. As the villagers were approaching, he passed a comment that sent chills down the youth, the young man's spine. He said, where are these infidels going? After their complaint, the Sariki called two Fulani men and asked them 
why they butchered the woman. One of them said, the woman have big buttocks. They simply made fun of the indigenous of Fulfude, and fun of the indigenous of indigenous of Fulfude. The children of the murdered woman came to bury their mothers. One of them physically fought and killed one of the Fulani killers and two others. The other Fulani killer headsman is the one killed with his family, one who killed his family. This man was also reputed to be a vicious Fulani kidnap kingpin who have wrecked havoc on Anambrians. The Fulani community is uh, is Anambra Akalos. The Fulani communities in I'm sorry, I wanted to say in the set east. The Fulani community in Anambra Akalos. They are en enraged not because of the family killed but because someone challenged their authority anambra arise arm yourself to defend your household defend your land defend your heritage defend your daughters defend your lives don't be caught unaware to be forewarned is to be forearmed the governor has been compromised some of the traditional rulers have been compromised. The police will help the killer Fulani Hesmen. Get up, men. Get up, women. Get up, young men. Get ready. This is a warning. It's an interesting article. I read it, so I think I should share it with you. We are not safe in our home. The only way we can do is to defend ourselves. Do not hope on your leaders because they are not going to do anything for you. You can see the, the joke they are making out of our ESN out of our good our leaders good mind to create a dynamic defense team that will help us they are now making a fool of it and uh, be, one more time before i go uh, there's this argument uh, they call it anyway i won't i won't have time to do that let, let's leave it for another day i wanted to add something that uh, some 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 clips that i have here that is very interesting but i don't want to go into it because we don't have enough time we have to speak we have to have our conversation i want to give you time to think about what we just spoken about and be able to discuss it this is radio biafra usa 2 as you're talking we can still be uh, you know reading once in a while saying things yesterday unfortunately there was a disappointment on the fundraising that was supposed to be in maryland there was a technical issue that made them have to put it off they have not given me a new date yet but when I hear from them, I'll be able to announce the date on which it has been put off. You know, it goes so some something went very, 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 very wrong. I was quite prepared for it. And um there was an issue with the Zoom. We couldn't log in and a lot of people had the same problem, but they eventually had to to terminate it and put it for another day. This is Radio Biafra. The number here is six four six nine two zero four five four one. You can call us at eight four five three four four. 7984. We are also on principal officers line plus one nine two nine four zero six nine nine five three. As so far, so good. We are also on Skype. We are so on Skype, we are so on Signal 845-283-9665. Don't forget to support our ESN. It's very, very important that you make your donations, contributions. And our leader, our leader comes on air today actually. So we're going to listen to our leader at 7 p.m. Biafra land time. He's going to be on air. So make, make sure that you tune in to be able to get more information on issues that are bound with us. This is Radio Biafra USA 2. Let's take our calls. When you're ready, call us. Biafra's Got Talent exclusive. Ikonsa. 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 He goes so in the rest of the 
in a the paradise You fuck like a soldier And you die like a soldier You never betrayed our motherland Your legacy lives on You are a gallant soldier A feben soldier Men of endless soldier My brother you will live on In Kosa you will live on In Kosa Until the heads are complete, two thousand of them. This is uh, Radio Biafra USA too. We are taking calls at six four six nine two zero four five four one eight four five three four four nine seven nine eight four plus one nine two nine four zero six nine nine five three. We listen to what Dilo Minaye said and the comments that were passed on that. That is to tell the people that we are taking our freedom in our hands there's nothing anybody can do to stop what we are doing let us see i have a first caller here today caller on principal officers line good morning tell us your name and where you're calling from thank you very much Mazi Peters, and um, good afternoon from here um, i want to greet you especially Mazi Ike, for your good work and i want to appreciate the france i can be family worldwide and i need a man and they come Mazda, am I coming out? Yes, you're coming out live and clear. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. You're talking to the world. You're okay. Go ahead, sir. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Your line is very clear. I don't know why you're not hearing me. Hello, Mazda. Yes. Your line is clear. Can I, I can hear you. 
Mazi. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you, Mazi, because before I think the call was muted. All right, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mazi. Um, let me. My name is Desmond, and I'm calling you from Italy, Mazi. Yeah. Um, Mazi, before I comment on your analysis this afternoon from here, and let me first of all um, call out our number to support ESN um, for Bia France in Italy. And this number is from the IPOB national body, signed by the IPOB national coordinator Italy. And it's for Bia France, first of Bia France, and members of our freedom, and those who wish us well, please to call this number if you are in Italy to support ESN. And the numbers are plus 39-35100-46055. I repeat the number again, plus 39-35100-46055. And this number is for the IPUB National Coordinator in Italy. The second number is plus 39-35125274. I repeat, plus 39-35125274. And this number is for the National PRU IPUB in Italy. Please, any of the number you call will be directed as long as you are in Italy or you, you want to support ESN, um, please do call this number to support us. Um, Mazi, on your program this, this afternoon from here, um, I want to just comment about the Anambra issue. We see, um, I want to tell our people that in Anambra that every village in Anambra must have their own local vigilante is very, very important. And I want also, especially those people that are living in areas of much concern that you have concentration of pipelines, you know, because these people, they operate through pipelines and they normally come at night, at wee hours when people are sleeping. So from this moment, our people must not sleep. Our people in Anambra must not sleep, not even across the Afrika land. We must not sleep. We see you must have the vigilante groups and share them and have the necessary connection for an appropriate backup if it goes to that. It's very, very important. And I also encourage the youths of every community that has Fulani in their area, in Anambra, across the upper land, to write to them, to leave the land. We cannot be living with people that are savages. I mean, look at what you read, you know, you go into the bush, you see people skeleton. These people, the mother people in Uli, you see the way the, if we are talking to some people, I don't know if people think it's strange, they are acting on, I don't understand. You know, look at the way they shattered the woman in Uli. You know, and nobody did anything. The government, our governors, they are even the ones encouraging them. The police, they are the police because they are also terrorists, the army, they are the army. So we have to, and how can we continue to live like this in danger and fear in our own land? It is inappropriate. So I'm advising our people to rise up, the use some grammar, rise up and do the need to. It's very, very important. This is time for action. No more time to talk. You know, there is no more time to talk. Anybody, these people, they think maybe that is anybody who comes out to support this plan, you should also be killed, should be treated like them. If you behave like plan, you are you have to be going like plan, you treat you like a plan person. Our people must send these people out of our land. It's very, very important. We don't want them. We can these people are savages. We can't live with savages. We are not like that. It's impossible. So that is my own. Our people must rise up. This message is for all their class across the group, their land. Everybody should rise up. There is no time for sleep. You know, there must be God in our land 24 hours, all areas, all areas, all areas, all areas, all areas that, especially those areas that there are pipelines. It's very, very important. Thank you very much, Mas. This is my submission. Thank, Thank you for your good work. Mas. Thank, you. Thank you so much. All right. This is Radio Biafra. We're still taking calls. 646 920 Eight four five three four four seven nine eight four plus one nine two nine four zero six nine nine five three. That's the line for the principal officers and the ladies who are also on signal. The signal number is eight four five two eight three nine six six five. Our brother have just said it that uh, the item the people should stay awake, not just only an Ambra state. But the entire entire region, entire Anambra, entire entire Biafra land, honestly, you should be able to form your local vigilantes. That somebody will come in and run to you and tell you that this is what I have seen. Children, everybody should be made aware that uh, it's not easy anymore for us. I have a call. Good morning, caller.
tell us your name and where you're calling from. Call on signal. I don't call on signal. Are you there? Well, I don't know what's going on. Because uh, I picked up the call and uh, call out on signal. Let's see. Try to see if if they're gonna answer. All right, let's let's see now. Call out on signal. Good morning. Are you there? Doctor Ibitas, good morning, sir. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. You're yeah, speaking to your brother Jidera, I'm calling from my location, sir. There yeah, well. Um, there was sir. Mazi, I I come across a video where Dave Omai is saying that uh, uh, the the agitation was a uh, you know the Lamani used their word to hijack and infiltrated. When they do election, they want to do the uh, bracatabra. They will tell you that uh, those protesting are uh, protesting the DGNU, but uh, criminals uh, hijack it, this one. Now, I want to ask Dave Omai, is Nkose a criminal? If you say that, if you tell that, oh, uh, some criminals are doing this, are doing that, are doing this, when you people compile to Ghana, uh, uh, this, just gather to Ghana and kill Nkose, was he a criminal? Are you telling me that those people in uh, in Emene, just judging prayers and the worship there. They are all they are also a criminal. Are you telling me those you killing them all? They are also a criminal. It, 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 they, they start to they, they try to justify whatever rubbish they're doing now, as if they're dealing with a criminal element. How you 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 sign an agreement with the zoo government and they they, they came down to say a youth a terrorist and they accepted it. That is certificate to kill alone because without that it will be difficult for people to come down. you sitting down as a governor and especially a chairman of Eastern Region Governors Forum. And you're sitting there, Python came up to three, four times. And these are criminals, all of them. Without that, the pandemic is arguing that you can't try him, you committed the offense when he was not this and that. And the terrify the is not telling the entire Igbo. You cannot uh, uh, bully people and come to become president. And uh, the same error five, his brothers, you see what you read now. The every the entire everybody funani, 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 funani. Then the same error five, his brothers in the Igbo bush, killing we you see what you say, two women commit suicide because they can't take it anymore. The other one is not going to go, have to go to surgery for the damage, not by uh, accident of anything, no. but the same his brother done to the, the, the Easterners. All those things are done, but Erofai have to open his mouth. I said, no, you can't look for president by abusing everybody. But Funani can, can kill everybody and keep one Nigeria. So now when you, look, you listen to these people like Dave Omai, talking about criminals, who is actually the criminal? Injustice have taken over. Judicial killing have taken over. How did he identify who is the criminal? When you want to kill anybody, you just took a gun to a gun and kill somebody. And he says, they don't know we are we are we are doing this because there's some criminal. Then what the relationship between with you, you and the daughter, those are those not those, those, those a criminal. I with us. Our brother just called now and say that you have to it's not only an umbrella that you must look for vigilante. I can tell you categorically, unless those who don't have a, a, a relationship with people in the village, we are paying our teeth here supporting them in the village now my question to these governors and especially Dave Omai is when you say that uh, criminals criminals and you want to establish vigilante group you want to start a baby after and a baby the same crew that you are going to put there then how do you join who is a criminal now okay in my own village and the entire those whom I know closer here they have been paying every day calling WhatsApp group are setting up please we need the five million we need 20 million with 30 million to buy the buy that the same youth you are calling criminals are the ones they are arming to protect them. Against who? The same Fulanis. But the governors will come, instead of them to say exactly what is tormenting the Igbos, no, they will come and still blame the youth. They are giving, are asking to protect themselves, criminals. They killed Ghana in the Ibelewe state. How many months ago? Now autumn have come now to say what they arm themselves. Then why did you kill Ghana? If you're going to take the whole Belway people to, to arm themselves, to defend their land now, that enough is enough, then who, how many Ghanas have died before he ought to make that, uh, this declaration now? Now, Erofa is now fighting with uh, Autumn because Autumn said that. 
I don't know whether Erufa is the governor of uh, Nigeria or is it the governor of Castina or Kaduna. Now, if you can, if Devil Mike can go to television every day, they're calling the youth criminal, 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 criminal. But every village have a united group against the Funanese that are coming down. They say you are bringing war. You see, we know when they mean by war. They, they, because they knew they're not safe when, when whatever happened, because they are the target. Because the people that have already grounded in the ground, when they stand up, they will be looking for who push them down. So we finally have intimidated them. You see what you read, and you see here what other commentary saying that there is a certain day a Funani boy, a youth Funani in Anambra said, challenge your piano in front of everybody there. Okay, now if a Funani man can bold enough to challenge a sitting governor of Anambra state, then that they have all of them. You see, our our little way say they, they go there to remove their boxers and so these people have surrendered to Funani. So the fear they have, they want to pass it to, to the youth so that we cannot stand up and do anything. Even when you want to send money, remember now what they say, no, don't give anybody, don't bring, don't take, keep your money. We will sort out the problem. We will do this. He said it on interview, on television. No, those people contribute in abroad. Don't do anything. We will, we will sort it out here. Today, what is going on? When uh, um, Obasan just said that the majority, I, I, I respect it to make a comment on that level. This person is not talking about also, when he say, when the Nigeria disintegrate, that what do you call it? The, the, minority. the minority will suffer. Yeah. They are the one. They are the minority. When you look at people keeping Nigeria where they are now, is minority. Number one, minority are the one ruling Nigeria. From presidency, the House of Assembly, look at the leaders, look at those who hold in the top, top position. From army chief, he's not from Franis. They look at the millionaires they have, look at the politicians. Those who are not, those are not only four governors have in the East. When you talk about Biafra, it's about 11 of them or so. So then, how many, about, after, after 7 to 80 million people, you have only 11 people tormenting us. With all the other, other, other Chongolo goes and following them. But, but, you, you may, maybe just count all of them, all the civil servants, add up to 2 million. Now, when you look at the, the Yorubas, the leader took us to Lumbusu, house leakers and the rest of them. How many are there? They are the minorities afraid. He's saying, when this is happening, I, we are the one going to suffer. Not that of he's course. talking about the masses. That's As right. you just say, is it a person from Ogoli going to come and complain? Where he have his own kingdom? Is it a Igbo man going to So no, the way the person just said that, you, that was what he's referring to. That, you know, we, the minority, will suffer. These yeah. people will come after us. That's exactly what that man is saying. Not, he's not talking about the ordinary person in the ground. Forget that rubbish is staying there. He's passing a message indirectly. Yeah. God bless you, God bless Dr. You. I. Peters. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's a, that's, that's a good thought. I never thought, I never even, <clears throat> I never even thought about it that way. Yeah, they are the minorities, the politicians. There are few of them that are tormenting everybody. So he's telling us now, if the country disintegrates, uh, you're going to take food out of our mouth. We're going to suffer. <laughs> That's correct. Absolutely. I, no, I wasn't thinking like that. I was thinking that he was probably referring to um, referring to uh, uh, the entire the, 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 the Igbo man or the Ogoni man or the reverse man or the Ikwere man and the rest of them. That's that's the way that's the way my mind was going. But I've now realized that actually what he said is very correct. They will suffer because they are they are in the minority. The politicians, the the, the men in the house of Senate, the people that are embezzling the country, that are looting the, the treasures of the country, they are very, very small in number. So they are the ones that are going to suffer because in the sense that when when you when you create a new nation, then they are not going to be able to, uh, how would I put it? They're not going to be able to feed themselves anymore. They're not going to be able to find money to loot because everybody is uh, uh, will be wise up. Okay, we are all migrants now aren't we <laughs> miscreants that's our leader is tweeting uh this and this is an old this looks like an old tweet but i still read it because it's irrelevant he said only in this uh, british created racist contraption known as the zoological republic of nigeria is asking for your god given right to self-determination make you a miscreant kudos to ipob for their consistency in the end, we will always win. That's correct. I have a call coming in. Let me take this one on um, straight line. Caller, good morning. Call on straight line. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Only in this the British Turn down your Welcome radio, sir. Welcome to the program. I don't have, sir. 
Who said, thank you for giving me this opportunity. My name is Simon. I don't know what well, calling from America, Spain. Just speak well. I know your time is running out. Uh, why I called, uh, thank you for Marzi Tibera, uh, what he said about the minority of the Because I said the same thing uh, in Marzi Jonathan program yesterday. Because I have checked, uh, like, uh, well, later I have also asked them, who is the minority? Who are this minority these people are talking about? It's those those evil minorities that are that are that enslave others. Obasanjo talking about the minority. Yeah, man, it's almost something they do during the Biafra War. I don't know who is a minority. And when they're calling minority, this is a nation, a clan, people you know, I don't know how these people how they reason, but Thank you that uh, people that have brain that see things in different way that think out of the bus. Obasanjo, your days are numbered. But our leader never talked about you the way he talked about you in past two brokers. Yeah, your days are numbered. Run, run, run. If you know how to run, run. Because all the crime we have committed against we, the upper most especially, have brought you. You have you have bring yourself out. Upon all the businesses of the elephant is destroyed. Your days are numbered. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Mark I Peters. Oh, you be for All right, I have another call coming in. Let me take this one on straight line. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, Alec Peters. Um, this is uh, Ume Opera from New Jersey. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. I uh, appreciate your, uh, your work for helping us on the, on the online, on the radio. Uh, because of you, uh, people, or you guys who are on our radio Biafra, then we are more informed, we are more educated, and we are more prepared, getting all the information we need to take action. This morning, I appreciate my leader, uh, uh, Mazen Nandikano. Um, I say, Michiko kept and bless him. We support him. We pray for him every day, for his courage, for his tenacity, for his intelligence, for his wisdom, and for his resoluteness. I encourage us to keep on moving forward and leading this uh, glorious uh, organization. It is not easy. We are so many countries with different ideas, but one thing is that we have to focus on Biafra, and he is leading the charge. I listened to your program this morning, and I am highly, uh, I am highly imp you know, impressed because of you know the way you put it. Before the war, all of us were there, uh, knew what happened. Uh, so when the war came, we faced it square. Our young men with bare foot, with bare hands, nothing, was able to fought, fight a war for for so many years, three years, and they died. Yes. The, the, the issue wasn't wasn't the death. The issue when you remember those who were coming back from the north. As a as a as a teenager, I lived in Enugu, in Artisan, which in Enugu. Yes. My father worked in the railways. I was right there and center when people were coming out from the north, limbs, head cut off, everything was done off to them. And we witnessed all that with all that rage when we were attacked our boys went to walk by defending our land yes. they, they never cared about who, who's gonna die all they cared was that their leader or the draws the line said we cannot you can't cross this line and we stayed for three good years so coming to this time around when we are here in the u.s me and you are here yes. and millions of us in the u.s all over the whole world and we have young men teenagers youths who are up to 50 million in number not, in the, not even those outside if you check what you have we have the education we have the money we have the technology we have the science we have everything we need and then we'll come out to defend our land and somebody's saying, I know what is all uh, Biafra is all about. Oh, that's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. It's crazy. That's nonsense. This time around, 
and 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 this is so baby you could carry me was able to give us a leader a leader that is going to lead us home then some people are talking it's very stupidity so what you have to do now is support esn support esn support esn get the money who are the men and everything is step by step this stage where we where we are right now we have won the war because the zoo is gone the remnants of all these people coming uh to Biafra land carrying their army and doing that that is the last that is the last lap of nigeria oh yeah like i said they will kill us and we'll kill them in the end Biafra will come yes that is where we're going and look at this what is happening in the north in niger and abuja will give us Biafra more faster than we think yes and since we have esn we have the courage that they will not cross into our land because we have the system to, to defend it. So all we have to do is to encourage these young men in the ESN and women in the ESN. Love them, encourage them, by telling them that we will support you all the way. Yes. We will support our leader all the way. With all the money we have, we will put it together and support these guys. And we will prevail. Yes. If you look at what I put in Enugu with Dr. With, 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 even though of all he has done, you can see that Biafras love their Uru and they'll defend it any day. No matter any person, any person is saying, we will support our own and we will defend our land and we will win because we are stronger. That's what it is. So here in the US, any person, if you are here for so many years and you're thinking of it doesn't concern you, time has come. So Biafra is around the corner. We will hold you responsible and accountable. Don't come and start telling us uh, this. There's that's, that's no cook and boo story. Everybody who is here, answered, must be responsible. Was answer, answer. What did you do when we were fighting for Biafra? Yes, the Biafra is here. So I, I, I very much thank every IPOB member because I am very, very grateful to be an, a member of IPOB. Yes, the best I ever done in life is to be a member of IPOB. Okay, and by being a member of IPOB, I give it my best everything, working tirelessly. It's a full time job. But yes. Enjoy it. Okay. Yes. So this time around, everybody has to put hand on deck. Whatever you have, put the money in, don't care. We'll deny everything this year, don't buy nothing. Anything. All the the the, the go down, buy two or three more three jeans and one sneaker. That's it. Every money for, for clothes. Yes, sir. Everything you have, yes, sir. Because we want to fortify them with everything they have, they need, and then make sure we'll go home. Because we're going home. Okay. So I thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate Jonathan. I appreciate uh, uh, Mazia Luzier. I appreciate uh, 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 the, the, the guy in the Middle East. All of you. Before it goes, without Rede Biafra, we have we could have suffered the same thing uh, like during the war. There was lack of information, except to come or cook on the war doing it. But now we are all over the whole world. So I appreciate that you guys are on the job and we will support you. Oh, hail Oh, hail Biafra. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you so much. Very, very elevating and uh, very, uh, I love I love what you just said. And uh, we are here. We are going to do it to the end. Nobody's going to stop us, honestly. I have a call coming in on the principal officer's line. I mean, no private line. Tell me, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning from here. Good morning. God bless you, Mazi. I thank you so much for all you do. Mazi, your analysis this morning is very, very wonderful. We really wow. appreciate you. Wow. We really appreciate your intelligence. Mazi, we want to, I want to use the opportunity to appreciate what you do also. But I am my man, Ugo Onejak, the National PRO of IPOB here in the United States. I reside here in Washington, D.C., but I, I am from Amibo, Amibo in Olo, Amibo, home of the Tiger, and Amibo, home of the Indigo of Okobo. Mazi, I thank you also. I thank you once more, Mazi. Yes, Maz, everything that you have said, that is all the record, everything that you played, is so wonderful. You know, I am extremely very happy because it is sinking on our boys. Maz, 99% of the Biafran youth now know that we are fighting for them. Yes. The obstacle that we have are the, uh, the governors and the politicians. But the politicians, they are also with us. But because of the situation where they find themselves, now they are playing game. So the issue there is that we have taken Nigeria, we have taken the situation to the extent that everybody is aware of what is going on now. Go to the you know the middle belt, 
for uh, in, uh, uh, Governor Autumn to stand up and then give that authority for them to carry gun. You go to Oduduwa, then you see how Iboho now is talking against the regime or the honor of the regime. And as I am just looking at the Facebook, then you see the redeemed church in uh, Uzita in um, Lagos is on fire. So, you know, a lot of things are going on at the same time. And with the mouth, the word from Mark, not the kind of mouth, been dis disintegrated. The only thing we have to do now is just to galvanize ourselves, dear friends. We have to unite ourselves, no matter whatever it is. We have to have just stay as a and do the needful, and that is what we are going to do. So the issue there now is that I am calling on all our brothers, all those ones that say that they have money. You are into business. You are in an importer. You are a doctor here in the uh, United States. You are a nurse here in the United States. You are a teacher. You are, you know, an engineer. Whatever, a business guy. You know, all of you that are here, you know we are fighting. We know that all your hearts are with us. We know that you are fighting with us. But the only thing is that you, we cannot hear your voice. But the thing is that now, you can still get your voice heard by dipping your hand in the pocket. And this is what we are talking about. We are talking about the ESN. The Eastern Security Network. This ESN is the security of the people, by the people, and for the people. And this ESN is a volunteer security. These are the people that don't take bribe. What they are doing there is not to save you. What they are doing there is to protect your family, protect all your investment, all the things that you have worked for in America, all the wealth that you have built in, in Nigeria. That, that's what they are protecting. So what we are saying is that you have to do the needful. Put your hand in their pocket and then donate money so that we'll continue doing this job. This job, this, you know, takes money to do. So please do the needful. And if you want to do it, I will advise you to go to our website. And that our website is www.ipobinusa.org slash donate. www.ipob in usa.org slash the net thank you and god bless you Mazi. all right god bless you very much uh my brother this is radio biafra we're still taking calls at six four six nine two zero four five four one i am going to ask uh, you to stay tuned i'll take a very short break and i'll be right back with you Biafra's got talent exclusive if it's not for it tell me where do i go if not for esl where do we stay Biafran's got talent exclusive. If it's not for IP, tell me where do I go? If not for ESL, where do we stay? If not for IP, tell me where do I go? If not for ESL, where do we stay? Just for ESL. And he's facing our way criminals in our land Struggling to stand for our rights, we say thank you for protecting the front oh, line. Yeah, you've been fighting so hard, protecting modern land against the full and needs and the midst of beautiful land. They are the soldiers that we know, runs us to God and keep us safe.
All right, I'm back again. Uh, let me take a call coming in on, um, on private line. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, Dr. I. Peters. Welcome to the program. Thank you for taking my call. I'm very exceptional program this morning. Thanks. As people have noted, it's an exceptional program. It's no doubt about it. And um, let me thank the guy that spoke before my man, Nijaka. He spoke exactly how I want a Biafran to sound. Because what is going on in our land, everybody should understand it if they haven't understood it yet. Our governors, our political leaders are in the pockets of the Fulani oligarchs. We have said it time and time again. The EFCC was set up as a bulwark or bulldog that will go and catch them arrest them if they do otherwise they will not speak for us they are not working for us they are not protecting our interests people should get it in their brain they will never do anything they have proven it time and time again any good governor went artisan to demolish what he felt was like a dump site. Only God knows what activity that is going on there. Yesterday, our brother called from the United States and said he just got back from home. And what is going on there, only God knows. He said, ammunition dump for the Fulanis. He went there to demolish it. They chased him out. He did not bring the army. He did not bring the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, helicopter gunship. They simply ran away with the military uh, a guy that he had, and that is the end of the story. But also the man in the United States is bringing military after military to come and kill our people. Yesterday, I saw a beautiful emo lady. They said, Stray Bullet killed her while she was sitting down in her house. It is unacceptable. We can never, ever, ever get anything from these people. If we continue to look at them, they will kill us with the full knees. They have sold their conscience. They have sold their souls to the murderers, full knees from the Sahel. What we need to do is as simple as this. Take over our states. Take it over. We will not stand. We do not have leaders. We will not survive unless we stand up, take over the state. The people should take over the states. The Fulanis have taken over Niger, Niger State and nobody is doing anything about it. They have been driving people away from their homelands and renaming their towns and villages. The people are not investing in IDP camps and the world knows this. And they don't care. They don't want to do anything about it. The sufferings and the chaos in Africa is to the benefit of the Western world. Know it. You weaken yourselves. You kill all yourselves. They will come in there and simply have easy access to your resources and take it away. And whoever is still standing will bow down to any condition they give him or they send him to the hate. Because they are the ones that cause the carnage. This is this this is the modus operandi of the Western world. They will if the Fulanis kill you all, they will come over here and take over the resources as they want. If the Fulanis try to raise any voice, they will send all of them to the hate for genocide. And that will be the end of both the Fulanis and the indigenous people, and the resources will go back to the white men. I'm just telling you this. You should call a spade a spade and say it the way it is. You shouldn't be afraid of anything when you are dying. Go and listen to Dana Mayai. We will not stand there and be looking at these criminal governors that have sold their souls. We should take over power from them. Take over power from them and save our lives and organize ourselves and do what? Defend ourselves. And for those of you, especially in the United States, in diaspora, wherever you are living, and if you are not contributing to the survival of your people, you have no place in Africa. 
Period. We are not begging anybody. This is where it is, and this is where it's going to be. We shouldn't should be begging anybody on this radio, this, 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 this God, God-given radio. Nobody should be begged. They know what is going on. They cannot deny. They are not dumb. They were all educated here. They read the news. They go to the internet. They know our people are at the brink of extinction unless we follow what Martin and the Canon is doing. It's as simple as that. My brother, that's all I have to say this morning. No, no. Dr. Peters, no, God no. bless you. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you very much. This is Radio Biafra USA 2. We're still here taking calls. I uh, just took a little short break and uh, back again. It's uh, number here is 646-920. 4541. Still want to remind you that tonight at 7 p.m. Biafra Land Time, our leader Mazin Namdekan will be broadcasting live as usual today, today, today. So stay tuned and make sure that you stay remain <clears throat> and listen to him when all the platforms, Instagram, from Instagram to Facebook to uh, IPOB Community Radio, which is very functional at this time, it's been put back in order. And there was a little itch on it, and it's working perfectly well. So you can listen to it. A FM stations also are working in most of the cities. Although somebody reported yesterday about, I think, uh, what was Oka or something like that. They've not had... And anytime you don't hear the FM stations, give it a piece. You know, try try to go on Facebook. Try to try whatever way you have. We have so many platforms. And you know something? They are fighting us left, right, and center. They try to make sure that the truth that we speak is not dissipated, but we have to speak the truth always. It does not really matter. I have a call. Good morning. Caller on principal officer's line. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning. This is Mazin Sylvester. As I'm, I'm coming from Minneapolis. Welcome to the program. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. The world is listening to you, sir. Go ahead. Am I done with Akpitas? Yes, live on Radio Biafra USA too. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Tell us your story. Thank you very much for taking my call because I, from your look at your age, when your picture was on the radio, you look elderly as well as me, but your voice is young, <laughs> like a young boy. I know. <laughs> so let me comment on our passenger's uh, story about the minority. The gentleman who spoke earlier about them being minority was wise. Well, what I want to say again is that uh, the minority he killed Zakibiam. The minority he killed Odi. Yes. The minority they killed the uh, Ogoni Sarawa and the uh, little Obi Wale. Where I was living in Patakom, like you said, I lived in Dude for more than forty years. Oh, okay. Now minority. Minority, minority, Spiff, the first meeting governor of the state. You remember him? He never yes. said a word since he left office. Yes. He lives in Amakalakala, in Tuma Brass. Okay. I mean, uh, in, in uh, Tuma Brass, Amakalakala is a uh, former Spiff. So now, it's a shame that our person cannot say the truth and his people are dying because he's st stole the oil money and buildings of a farm, which is supposed to be federal government property, now it's a personal property. So it's a very big shame. But I want to thank you, you and our leader, Martin Nande Carlo. I've been listening to Radio Biafra since 2009, when I was living in my old house. Very good. Was, uh, we used to get up in the, in the 10 o'clock and listen to Radio Biafra when it was uh, on that short wave and all, all these things. So I must thank our leader and all, all the special officers. I have a member here in America. I love freedom. I love what Namikali is doing. I was six years, 1966, when the war, when the war started, and like you said, like 14 years, I was six years then. Yes. I'd like to give thanks to all the people who are fighting for Biafra freedom. I love freedom. I want to be free. It's a shame that there will be a new builder airport and there cannot be international airports. While all the North has airports. It's a shame that all the old evil leaders who say they are leaders, according to them, we want to travel to Lagos and Abuja to seek for visa and seek for travel overseas. It's a very big shame. I can't imagine such a thing. Why the whole source is from the east? They kill the people of Zamfara to dig their gold and sell for free. But uh, they don't know that there's a lot of karma. They will all pay for what they are doing. Nice. They will pay. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for your call. This is Radio Biafra USA 2. That's better Sunday to everybody. I uh, hope uh, only get a church today because today is Sunday. You know, normally our people go to church on Sundays and uh, you go in there and pray to God and ask to quick Biama to give us Biafra. That's all we need. Pray for our leaders to, you know, to sustain them, give them strength. Our leader, Mazin Namdekanu, is talking to us today, doing marvelously well. For his age, I don't know that just only the strength of the Almighty God that can give him the power to do what he's doing. Because I draw easy, you know, for somebody when you look at him, when he's talking and listening to him, I feel so much, I feel him so much in my heart that this man is uh, doing what he's doing because I draw, I draw fetcher, fetcher. All right, so what we are saying, like Obasanjo's noise that is making about minorities, I think my brother that just spoke and gave me this clue has made, made, made sense to me because when he keeps saying minorities, I was thinking that he was thinking in terms of the the people in the river, our brothers in the river Rhine area. No, he's talking about them. They are politicians. They are the ones that will lose because the chance are mad is it for them to steal, to loot, you know, whatever they... The, the way they have been doing it before. Call her on a uh, straight line. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Mazu Aikita. Good afternoon from here. They were. They were. Um, my name is Mazu Zanele Chukwazo Chinze. Calling from Italy. Mazu, uh, I thank you. I thank our leader. And I ask God to strengthen him more. Maz, I want to, I want to, I don't know if it, if it is an advice or if it is a, 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 just, I want to advise all our people to join hand and pray to, to God to strengthen our, no, not our, to strengthen the angels or no government to give them more, more, more powerful explosives. Because each time, each time, each time I watch the the the, the so-called video of uh, Hope was at the mass house, and I saw the main building standing. The other, the the they, they go they go they go and burn the the boys quarter and leave the main building. In fact, I'm not I'm, I don't know I don't know how my I don't know how I feel. That God should should give them should give uh, no government more sense. To be using more it's more more hard explosive to bring down any any if if, if they if they want to position they should bring the position down not only to to burn the position to bring the position down if they want if they went to all this if they go to all this governor's house or this um uh this so called leader leader or other the that wish they should bring their house down not burn it. they don't burn it they burn they can you can tomorrow buy one bucket of paint and paint it again. Bring it down completely. That is what we are praying. Now that is our, my praying to God. That God should give them more explosive, more 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 having a, a explosive so that they will be using it while today. So the, to be bringing the, the houses down one after the other. Man, see, this is my contribution this afternoon. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. This is Radio Biafra USA too. I know what what we are saying is that uh, whether they like it or not no matter how much they struggle, we'll always excel. All right, I have room for a very few more calls, or one or two calls, and we'll call it a day. But for now, let's pray. I have a call coming in. Let me take this one as probably my last call today. Caller, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. I am having fun here yes, with this church music. There and there, well, welcome to the program. God bless you, one name. You see, you can all look. Well done. This is my SAG from London. God bless you. Um, I've been listening this morning, you know, since you started the program and all the analysis you've made and all the other people, you know, contributing. There is one aspect of this I want to bring to our people. You see, when we say Biafra, Radio Biafra, Biafra is our religion, and Radio Biafra is where we worship. What it means is, uh, if you go to church, people go to church to contribute money. 
you know, because they were given a hope of a heaven, imaginary heaven, you know. Now they contribute money for tithe and offering. The perspective I want our people to look at is uh, what was the purpose of Jesus Christ coming to earth? What was the purpose of a uh, uh, prophet like Moses coming to earth? They all came to earth for a purpose to set the captive free. Those people that are sick to give them, you know, healing. People that are suffering, that are in bondage for several years, several decades to set them free from those bondage and hardship and killing. This is exactly what Mazen Namdekano, our leader, and IPUB, they have come to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, if you want to support the work of God, I, calling you now, what I've been doing over the years, I joined our leader, even before ESL was formed. The evangelism I go, I was a staunch Christian, you know, Pentecostal, I even went to Bible college. To be ordained a pastor before I traveled to UK. Now, what I've done over the years is to distance myself from what you call the church, you know, in Nigeria, and then follow IPOB, follow Mazen Namdekano, follow the teachings going on. I will go out and try to all the friends I've made over the years. Once I ask them, Are you supporting ESN? and they say, Oh, no, we are not supporting ESN, I will ask them why. Before the end of the argument, I will win them over. I will even encourage them, direct them, and tell them how to, you know, start uh, supporting ESN. I did one yesterday in my house here, last week, the same thing. Every day, I call it a duty to make sure our people support ESN. Because the first line of defense we have is ESN. 1967-70... Biafran, uh, Nigerian genocide over Biafra. Yes. We had no funding people defending our land. Some of us were recruited at the age of 10 years or even 9 years. Yes. You know, from Boy Scout, they give you a stick to go and uh, join to fight for Biafra. Now, 21st century, we have millions of young men and women who have dedicated their lives to defend our land without asking for penny. Now, what is your responsibility living in diaspora? The reason why God sent all of us out to diaspora, he knew that a time like this will come. And when a time like this comes, is our resources, whatever we lay our hands in the Western world, we have to use it to support the people defending our land. This is an obligation. You don't need to be a member of IPOB, but as long as you are a Biafran. Yes. You know who you are. You know what you do. It doesn't matter your political status in life. You should know that you have a homeland. The only homeland you have is Biafra land. It's not America. It's not UK. We might have British passport, American passport, working in their countries, but we have a place. And this place now is under siege by foreigners, Fulani Marudas from pit of hell coming over to take our ancestral land and our young men and women they've dedicated their lives sacrificed everything good life to defend our land now you are finding it difficult to put your hands in your pocket to be supporting them to make sure that your land is being defended that when you go home you will still have a place you call home i am begging our people please please Biafras all over the world. Rise up. Nigeria is over. He's long gone. Nigeria is long gone. If you are still holding on, oh, Nigeria go better or you don't go better, you are just wasting your time. Yes, right. Because they came and they destroyed Nigeria. They are the ones that destroyed Nigeria. Not Yorubas, not uh, Biafras, not uh, Arab or Middle Belt. It was the Fulani. They came and destroyed Nigeria by themselves. So if you are still fighting to keep one Nigeria, it means you are aiding and abetting them to kill more people. Now, Fulani, this one goes to you. Sultan of Sokoto, 
the presidency, Nieti Allah leadership, all of you, even those in military, take it or you leave it. You are going down. You are going down. What was done to Fulani in other African countries will be done to all of you in Nigeria. Yeah. That you will never have a, a safe place to be called so a place in Nigeria. All these your foot soldiers you're bringing, staying behind the scene, supporting them, taking federal money, money that still come from Biafra land to arm your terrorist Fulani brothers to come and kill our people, take over. It's not going to happen anywhere. Yes. It's not going to happen. But all of you should know, you are not going to escape this time. Never will you escape. Even if you escape, we will track you wherever you are and make sure you go down because you have destroyed so many lives. You have made so many houses, so many families. You know, they've lived in pain and poverty and penury for years and decades. Now is your time to receive the reward of the work you have done. Yes. Adeboye. Yesterday I said in a program, Adeboye, you went and had a meeting with Erufai, the man, a head of terrorists in Nigeria that has been killing people all over. You went, you call yourself a man of God. You went to go and have a meeting with a terrorist and you came out to say, oh, pray for Nigeria. What did God do to you? He killed your first son for you to feel the pain of other Nigerians Erufai has been using his people to kill in Nigeria. That's the reason why your son went to bed. He did not wake up. Get that message. You better get it. When all of you start preaching the right word of God from your pulpit, God will have mercy on any of you. If not, you are all wasting your time. The few words that are speaking out now, what is the word they are saying? The same duplication of our leader, Mazin Namdekano's years of prophecy, years of teaching. Yeah. That's what they are duplicating now. What does he show to you? That we are right, 100% right. The truth is on our side. And none of you can defeat us. That's the way it is. Because what we are doing is a mandate from heaven. And God is with us. And God knows we are fighting to liberate our people from slavery, from poverty, from debt. That's what we are fighting for. Nothing more, nothing less. Mazi, I say, may Chuko Kikabiyama continue to bless you yeah. for all the things you've been doing. Bless our leader. Bless all IPUB. Thank and you. the Dudu and Freedom that's all over the world. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you very much. That ends today's program. All the phone lines are turned off. I can't take any more calls because Mazi Alozia is coming in. Radio Biafra USA 1. It's time to be on the air. Please stay tuned. And don't forget, we have to remind you that our leader, Mazin Nam Dekano, is actually broadcasting today. It's going to be live today. Oh, fortunately, I don't know what's going on here. Why is this not playing? The music is not reporting to play. <laughs> you know, this this uh, <laughs> computer thing, sometimes it baffles me. You do something and they're doing something else. You're doing something else and he's doing something else. All right, from here, we're going to say, all I got to remind you is that uh, Biafra is our religion, and Radio Biafra is where we worship. I'm off the air this time, and Mazin Alozie is coming in next. Stay tuned. Don't go away. From here, it's goodbye.